All right, good people. This is part two. Uh, the film ran out or the storage ran out. But uh, like I said, uh, once you get the machine working and knowing the items that it's going to be working with, you're going to understand and know how to babysit the machine. It's very rare, very hard that depending on the design that you can really just let this thing go, set it and forget it kind of doesn't work like that because depending on the logo or depending on the actual design you may have to be there to do something to the to the item or the garment you know maybe when it makes a certain l or a certain letter you may have to make sure that it's it's pushed down or it's correct so that when it goes over it it doesn't bunch up um you have to just be very cognizant of your surroundings uh when you're doing other items and other projects uh just know to check in with the machine um also taking the machine taking an item on and off you have to be very uh careful because sometimes you might put the you might load the item but it may not load correctly and say for instance your bobbin comes out when you pull that pull the item off to get to the bobbin and then insert it back in if it's off a little bit that particular item or garment is ruined so you just have to be very aware of the things you're doing but over a period of time you will start understanding more and more about your machine um if i had to buy this machine over again i probably wouldn't go with this machine um i would have either gone with maybe a bigger machine meaning maybe four heads or i would have bought one of the more expensive i think tajma or i can't to it starts with a t it's a so they've been around for a long time they're much more expensive. Like for this particular machine, uh, I believe would have been closer to forty thousand dollars instead of whatever I paid for it. Um, and I, you know, I have friends that have been embroidering for years, and I didn't even think about asking them any information about embroidery until after I purchased the machines. But he's been using those machines forever and haven't had any issues, and they work really well. And the, the actual quality of the work is much you can see the difference you know i'm not saying that this isn't a, a a professional machine but though i think i think it starts with a t tajima or something whatever but that machine produces a better quality uh image than what this one does you know i, I actually sent my my file from that was being digitized to him and he did my hats and the hats look a little bit better just a little bit just a little tighter um you know if it wasn't mine probably even paid no mind to it but just know that uh you know there are other options and i said even buying four because i think the more heads you buy uh the variance and pricing and stuff like that kind of changes to the point to where it is a little it's conducive to have more conducive to having multiple heads getting more jobs done but the problem with that is, like I said, things do go wrong with these things. Needles break, and if a needle breaks, they all stop. Um, a one mistake that I did make is, and I didn't know this, and if you guys are looking for a machine, this may help you. I was under under un, unaware of thread count. A situation popped up where they had one of these. It was a single unit. It had 180,000 uh, stitches on it. I didn't know what that I didn't know what that meant. I looked at it like buying a car. I wanted a car with zero miles on it. And they wanted eight thousand dollars for a single head unit. And I was like, I'm not paying, I want a brand new unit. I was trying to give them five thousand dollars and all this. Not understanding a hundred and eighty thousand stitches is nothing. That's like a, a huge back design on a jacket or you know ten or twelve hats. You know what I'm saying? That's nothing. So if you're looking for these things, all these little things that you need to look for. Also, you don't have to pay no influencers for help uh, when you purchase one of these machines. If you call Recoma, they'll help you. They'll have a tech talk to you and talk you through it. Now, um, if you just want to you know, support these people, you, you can continue doing that. But for the most part, if you have a specific issue and you've purchased your machine, especially from them, they will walk that thing through and they would and to be honest with you they've sent technicians out extra now i did pay for my machine cash which was probably the other issue and probably a mistake that i made i uh was thinking i just didn't want any debt i didn't want to have to feel like i was having to sell items 
in order for me to uh, make payments and stuff like that. You know, I had the cash, so I was like, you know what? Let me just pay for it out front and then figure it out later. Now, this is the part of the video where you have to be honest and real with yourself. Now, this was a mistake that I made. I was trying to sell hats early on using heat presses and uh, hat presses and things of that nature. And the hats never really sold. Like, to be honest with you, it never really sold. So for me to take in a, an investment of probably total of around 35000 when you look at everything I had to buy for embroidery, I should not have gotten an embroidery machine. I probably should have bought a DTF printer, which, because I print the shirts, and this, I was, this is like a year ago in the large format DTF with the shakers and all this stuff, were, they were exactly the same price. So I basically chose the embroidery machine over the DTF and all actuality, I think in terms of business, I could have outsourced the embroidery and ran my prints for my shirts and stuff with the uh, DTF. But what I will say is that since the price of, so, 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 so many people are now doing DTF, the price of DTF has dropped. So that 30,000 I was gonna spend on a machine, a large format machine is probably gonna be less than ten thousand dollars in the next year or so so maybe it works out you know better in the long run but uh that was probably the only issues that i really had you know like this just make ask yourself do you are you selling and do you know what you're going to sell because if you're only going to sell a couple of hats or do a couple of shirts or are you starting a, a clothing line versus having a, a print business and that's something that you have to really become real with yourself because I've done more hats and uh, more hat embroidery than I have for my own company. Now, I've, I've made a bunch of hats for myself, um, but in terms of sometimes people hit you up like, hey, man, look, uh, can you do 15 hats for me? And it's like you don't want to take the business because I have a clothing line. I should be working on my own stuff. But. There are other ways to, to outsource your machine and your equipment to make money to help with some of the cost of running a, a, a print shop or something like that if that's what you're trying to do. But I didn't want to do that. I wanted to have a clothing line and um, I actually had an opportunity to set up as a vendor and sell clothes and, and merchandise that was mine. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, but. I will take a job here and there, like if it's a friend or if they need something done, I may do it. But that's how you have to figure out, are you are you doing a clothing company or are you running a print shop? Those are very different things. And also, uh, if you do take on jobs, something that I would recommend is, personally, I would not take someone else's uh items i'm not taking their shirts i'm not taking their hats and the reason why i won't do that is because these machines are fickle you're going to mess up a shirt you're going to forget to check and make sure that the you know you got the shirt all the way on and it's going to sew itself together you're going to do that it's going to be a situation where one of the hats uh miss miss uh registration and you're going to need a hat so if they bought 20 hats they send you 20 hats and you mess up two of the hats your order is going to be short so what I try to do is whenever I order something, if I say, hey, I'm about to do a 12 hat run uh, for a design or a logo that I have and I want to get that off, I order 20 hats or 24. <laughs> or I order 24 hats just in case if I do mess up, I have extras. And then if they ever need like a, uh, if they want to reorder and they might only need two or three hats, I have hats in stock or I can use that uh, extra stock for something else for someone else who may not need a larger order so uh, inform the person that you're doing the order for like hey uh, we're, find out where they actually purchased the stuff from find out how much they paid for the items because in some cases you may be able to order the stuff through your resources at a better price than they do so if you mess something up you can at least you know replace it so um, there are a bunch of little small little things that can help out a lot and um, you know help help streamline what you got going on. But you know me as someone who's a you know a, a, a clothing brand owner, I wanted to stay far away from doing work for other people. 
but every once in a while you know orders come in that they're they're super small and they they won't hurt but i'll give you guys one last thing is that um i took an order for someone who you know they work at the gym i work at and they wanted some hats done and i was like all right I'll, you know i'll do them well that design was a super small design but the hat that i use for their design was not working with the machine every three to four stitches into the second letter it broke it broke it kept breaking or it would jump registration the hat was so hard that it wasn't going through the machine correctly so i had to research the richardson it was a richardson hat the richardson hats are very tricky and they're super expensive so you're talking 12 13 dollars per unit on the hats that they had because they brought them to me but I had to read and they say, hey, soften the head up, get a, 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 a blow dryer or a heat gun to soften the head up so that the, the machine is going to be more likely to um, produce a quality print without messing up. And, you know, little small things like that. And um, I wind up I wind up messing up like 10, 12 hats um, trying to do that design. And I lost so much money. You know what I'm saying? And uh, it's one of those things where that was a time where you need to know what's going on because he had used a super expensive um, blank. The blank was like $17. I had to replace that, you know? So if I was the person who was like, hey, look, these are the options you have. I have all these different hats around here. Like, yo, I, you can do this hat. This hat's going to cost you $10, but it might cost me 5 This hat's going to cost you 12 It's going to cost me 6 But you can get your margins and stuff like that. And then also you have the ability to adjust the price based on uh how much you get stuff for but um so many people have asked me you know about the machine and stuff like that so i decided to make the video uh like i said i'm building a clothing company from the bottom up and i'm doing it out of my garage i have like a bunch of different businesses going on at one time in my garage i have ac and stuff like that so um, i'm just gonna give you guys information on how to help you guys uh maybe you know if you run into some hiccups that i've already gone through you can check this out so go ahead and subscribe to this page no hobbies only obsessions i am jason mike mr athletic over everything on instagram you might see my stuff you know dunking powerlifting, you know cooking doing a whole bunch of different things but i hope this video was very helpful for any of those who needed the help and until next time later